Right guys, this is a long plane review for Aliens the Computer Game, US version on the Amstrad CPC. Released by Activision in 1987, one year after the other Aliens game. Yes, I'm sure most of you are aware that there are two Aliens games. The first one, released by Activision in 1986, was an excellent and atmospheric first person shoot 'em up. It was awesome and brilliantly captured the feeling of the movie. Indeed, one of my first ever live streams, we played the game from start to finish, finally completing it, and is well worth a watch too. So link in the description below if you want to watch that. So here I believe Activision decided to make more use of their Aliens license they had paid for and saw the American Commodore 64 version and decided to port it to the Specky and CPC and also release the Commodore 64 version in the UK to milk as much as they could from the license. An unusual move but probably one that paid off uh, financially for them. Yes, and this was later re-released on the alternative budget label. Um, there you go, there's the box art for you. And let's kick things off here. So, um, there are six levels to this game. Indeed, on the box, if you noticed, it had the text, Six Game Compendium under the title. And each follows scenes from the movie and offers differing gameplay types, although level five is just a rehash of level two. Here's the loading screen here. Actually, not too bad. Conversion by Mr. Micro. Um, so it was co-released by Electric Deems and uh, Activision. Uh, they're both the same company. Uh, more on Mr. Micro later. These credits here are for the American version of the game. Um, that was originally on the uh, Commodore 64. They, ha uh, they had nothing to do with the Amstrad and Specky conversions. Um, I'm fairly sure of that all being based in America, probably never heard of a Spectrum or an Amstrad before. Based on the film by James Cameron, um, I'm sure most of you have seen the movie, if not, there's lots of text and cutscenes in this game which will sort of ex roughly explain the plot uh, as we go along. And an OK title screen there, but no music! Not very good that. Uh, Colonial Marine status update. Hicks, Gorman, Vasquez, Hudson, Drake, Frost, Dietrich and Crow, they're all okay. So yes, we'll be controlling some Marines in this game and of course Ripley, uh, who was played by Sigourney Weaver in, in the movie. Oh, here we go. Sometime in the future, space, silent and endless, the stars shine like the love of God. Against them drifts a tiny chip of technology. It is the Narcissus, skate pod of the ill-fated star freighted Nostromo. Inside sole survivor warrant officer Ripley has been drifting in hypersleep, hypersleep for 57 years. And now we're in a conference room. Uh, Ripley faces a board of inquiry. Van Leeuwen. The lifeboat's flight recorder supports some elements of your account that for some reasons unknown, the Nostromo set down on LV-426 that it resumed its course and was subsequently set for self-destruct by you. Ripley says, Look, I told you we set down there on company orders to get this thing which destroyed all of us and your precious ship. The rep there. You found something which has never been reported once from over 300 surveyed worlds, a creature that gestates inside a living host and has concentrated acid for blood. Ripley. Look, I'm telling you, those things exist. Kane saw, said he saw thousands of those eggs in that ship. Thousands. Thank you, Officer Ripley. That will be... That's not all. If those things get back here, that will be the, that'll be all. You can j just kiss all this goodbye. Oh, I'm not doing it in the voices, though, guys. Van Leeuwen, it is the finding of this board that Officer Ripley has acted with questionable judgment and is unfit to hold an ICC license. Why won't you just check out LV-426? I don't have to. There have been people there for over 20 years. Terraformers, planet and engineer engineers. They go in, set up these big atmosphere processes to make the air breathable. Takes decades. How many colonists? I don't know. 60, maybe 70 families. Families. I'm not doing the voices though, guys. I'm not trying that. Several weeks later, Ripley's apartment gateway station. Company representative Carter Burke stands in the narrow, dingy corridor with Lieutenant Gorman, Colonial Marines, a corpse. Uh, the door opens slightly. Hi, Ripley. This is Lieutenant Gorman of the slam. Ripley, we have to talk. They've lost contact with the colony on LV-426. At ease. I'm sorry we didn't have time to brief you before we left gateway, but, sir? Yes, Hicks. Hudson, sir. He's sick, Hicks. What's the question? <laughs> is this going to be a stand-up fight, sir, or just another bug hunt? All we know is that there's a still no contact with the colony and that a xenomorph may be involved. It's a bug hunt. 
I'll tell you what I know. One of our crew members has brought back with this thing on his face a parasite. We couldn't remove it, but later it came off by itself and died. It must have laid something inside him down his throat. We were having dinner and he um, 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 just grabbed his chest and uh, look, man, I only need to know one thing where they are. I hope you're right. I really do. I want DCS and tactical database assimilation by 0830. Ordnance loading, weapons strip, and dropship prep details will have seven hours. Prepare for equipment identification. <sighs> yes. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get picked up for uh, roles in major movies anytime soon, guys. All voiceover work. <laughs> equipment identification. A pointless little level here. I don't even class it as a level, actually, in the manual. This will be like seven levels then, but uh, all you got to do is just choose the right thing there. And you can just keep going until you get the right one. Kind of a bit of a pointless thing, but I guess it just kind of adds a bit more to the movie feel in the game and trying to draw you into the game like the movie was. Um, so I like they've added these extra bits and bobs there. And then you get a mission code. So if you fail a mission, you can actually always move to the next mission, uh, but you don't get a status code. Ripley, how many drops is this for you, Lieutenant? 38, simulated. How many combat drops? Well, uh, two, including this one. So now on the uh, combat drop level. And um, well, the drop ship. And basically, you're in control of the drop ship here, landing uh, on the planet and, and dropping through the atmosphere, hurtling towards the planet's surface. And basically, you've got to keep yourself uh, within these rings. And if the profile compliance there on the right meter drops into the red, uh, you fail the mission and have to restart. And you can see those um, six pink line, horizontal lines, in the middle there. Obviously that's the centre point of your ship, but the, the vertical centre is at the bottom of those six pink lines. So the bottom the bottom lines just under it is where your centre point is, so you want to keep that just a little bit higher up if you're using the pink lines there. As you can see there, I'm keeping it just above the centre point. Uh, nice little touches in this level. Like the whole ionization and the, 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 sh the dropship shakes at points and stuff like that. I think we get a notification that there's rough air ahead and then it shakes again at some point, I think. Okay, sound effects here. And a lot of people find this really difficult. Um, most people I've come across have said, oh, I, I got stuck on the first level and I got really frustrated with it and never played it any further. Indeed, when we look at the Amsterdam Action Review later on, um, they uh, uh, said in the magazine review that they found the first level incredibly hard. I don't know. I, I didn't find this too difficult. Just, just be looking at their circles further ahead and be anticipating. There we go. Final approach. And we're done. Um... There's a couple of tricky bits there that might catch you out, but really, I don't think it's that hard. Oh, nice cutscene here as we land, and uh, time to deploy the Marines into the base. Which, as we know, and they don't, that is completely overrun by the alien Xenomorphs. A little bit of delay here before it moves on. Finally, there we go. Ah, they all survived, and then you got the mission code there. So you can always skip forward levels, I believe. Gorman, opponent, what's going on? Vasquez, let's rock! Who's firing? I ordered a hold fire. Get them out of there, do it now. Dietrich, Crone, sound off, Frost, opponent. The Sarge is gone, man. Get the hell out of here. They're cut off, Gorman, do something. And okay, so this is the APC rescue. The APC is armored personal carrier. It's the, it's the big like uh, vehicle, and Ripley's crashed it into part of the colony. And now the Marines have to escape an alien attack, and, and all four Marines have to get to the APC. Look what have you here? 
uh, one of my colleagues is right on the screen next to me and we can switch between four different marines you got the status there so there we go number three there i'm controlling number three dietrich and his motion tracker has uh, picked up aliens nearby him and he can't move off the screen oh there's an alien there's aliens and there you go he's cleared them away and they can get quite tense you never know when an alien attack is going to happen on any of the uh, crew but if two of them are together on the same screen um uh, they protect each other and they don't get ta attacked by aliens so the goal here is to hopefully meet up with another fellow marine and stick with him moving between the screens and the marines are randomly um placed oh my god there's a s i've just met up with another marine so now we've got two pairs of marines all together and we can move them bit by bit to the exit and this <laughs> this was incredibly lucky and this will this will mean the rest of this level will be probably quite boring to watch so as i switch between the marines as you can see there and move them if i keep two on a screen at the same time they don't get attacked by aliens so this is going to be one of the easiest runs i've done of aliens and uh, probably not that <laughs> Yeah, interesting to watch. Now, when you start this level, um, they are randomly placed uh, in the game. Usually, they all they all start in like the sort of north um, west part of the map, and it's not a huge area, um, but you can fairly easily, if you're quick, um, get them to all meet up with each other, and then they just move them either in pairs or all together at the same time um, but they are randomly placed each time so don't expect uh, to start the game and find them in the same positions each time I was just extremely lucky there that they were very closely um, spawned next to each other and found them quite quickly I could have gone the opposite direction and went for miles the other way and never met up with uh, one of these guys but there we go so now we can just move them in pairs bit by bit and that's um, pretty easily accom accomplished this level then. That's not always the case though. Um, I have struggled beating this level before, um, especially when they're all spread out and like more than one of them is under attack. Um, and sometimes um, you have to wait ages for the aliens to appear on, on who's attacking one certain one particular marine, whilst another marine is also being attacked and is attacked quicker and then is captured and eaten by the aliens. Ugh. Um, but if the if a, a marine is captured by the aliens, if you're quick and can find him, you can actually rescue him. Um, so this is probably the most interesting level in the game. And probably the most exciting but however how luck has befallen me here in terms of the uh, spawns of the marines um it's actually probably the most least interesting run you'll see here um i've been very lucky um now normally there is a bit of tense and atmosphere to this level as i said because each of the marines could be all being attacked um and re repeatedly being attacked and Yes, it can end up being quite uh, tense and a bit uh, frustrating sometimes. Oh, right, finally, we're coming into like, the uh, the heart of the aliens, um, well, where they've set up base, basically. And the exit, um, well, the APC, is sort of to the southeast, or the bottom right, bottom right of the map. So if you keep moving towards the bottom right, you may well find it. And if you just come into the aliens area, it's literally at the top of this aliens area to the right. So it should be actually just right here. Very nearby. I think it's down and right here. The map stays the same there. Oh look, I moved too far away and I get attacked by an alien there. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, oh look, he's um, glitched and got stuck. That was lucky. <gasps> number four's been captured. We've got to go back to, um, oh, num who's number four? I'm being attacked as well. So he's been captured because now his, his, his signal is fully red. I moved too far away from him. And then we both met up with each other and we've res I've rescued him. So he actually got captured by the aliens and I was quick enough to get back to him. Um, that's about the most exciting thing you'll see in this level now. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so um, this game was converted by Mr. Micro to the Amstrad. I can't find much about Mr. Micro at all, really, uh, apart from that. Mr. Micro was funded by Jim Gregory in Manchester above his retail shop. Um, oh, I found the APC there, so those two have survived. Cool. So, as I was saying, um, Mr. Micro funded by Jim Gregory Manchester above his retail shop. They started live producing graphic adventure games, uh, software protection devices, educational games, and they had plans to do lots more, really quite a lot of adventurous stuff beyond the usual arcade games. Started off with quite lofty ambitions, apparently. But it wasn't really to be the case, and it wasn't really to happen for them. And they later found themselves doing conversion work for other, other larger companies. So, for example, they did Elite for the Atari ST and Amiga, uh, and Saber Wolf for the Commodore 64. Those two have been quite big, notable examples. However, they were one of the first companies to do dual cassettes before anyone else really thought about it. With, say, for example, uh, the Commodore 64 version on one side and the VIC-20 on the other. And they might have done Amstrad on one side and Spectrum on the other too. Um, but um, they were by that point they were doing conversion work. So other Amstrad work by Mr. Micro. Um, they did Crazy Golf, Punchy, Triple Triple, and Qubit for Amsoft. Um, Spitfire 40 and Terror of the Deep for Mirasoft. And along with Aliens, they did Space Shuttle and Karnov for Activision. Now, Karnov wasn't too bad. Then later Dragons of Flame for US Gold, and as late as 1991 with Lone Wolf for Audiogenic, which I believe was their last game, unable to keep up with the pace with the 16-bit uh, onslaught at the time. Yes. Um, so as for this game here, I mean, the graphics are... Well, on the sprites are absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's so crude, honestly, uh, a 10-year-old. Could have done a better job. Um, sound effects are actually okay, but we needed some more atmospheric sound effects in the background, not just the walking noises. I mean, okay, when the motion detector goes off, that's pretty cool. That's nice. Um, but maybe some eerie music would have been good. It would have added a bit more atmosphere to the game, like the other Aliens game. Um, it's a tiny plane area as well. It's ridiculous, especially when an alien is attacking you on screen. You've got such a small area to be manoeuvring around the alien to try and shoot it. And you have to shoot the aliens pretty much in the head and straight on, otherwise it doesn't connect. Um, so with that small plane area, even though the aliens are kind of ridiculously easy to avoid uh, anyway, because of how sort of slow and clunky they are, um, you could actually end up being caught by accident because of how small the plane area is. Oh, there we go. And then we finally reach the end thank god and that was the biggest part of the game <laughs> and all four marines return safe and sound there we go all survived and there's your mission code that's unlike the movie because half, half of them were dead by this point i think weren't they X, they cut the power. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power? They're animals. Get the trackers going. They're inside the perimeter. It's game time. There's movement all around. 10 metres, 9 metres, 8. That can't be. They're inside the room. Oh, my God. So, yes, this is the, um, what would we call this level in the manual? Operations Room Rampage. And this is kind of a um, tapper ripoff, really, in a way. If anyone remembers Tapper. <laughs> ah, I just got to defend the aliens. If you can see in the bottom of the screen there, there's a door being slowly cut open with a laser cutter. And basically, basically we've got to survive as long as possible until the uh, door is cut open. You can see it's slowly growing there in the bottom left. And uh, you can see how many Marines we've got in the corridor there. If an alien gets through, it will, take, it will come and, and take one of the Marines away. And ideally we could do as many marines as possible for the next level because we are guaranteed to lose at least one or two on the next level. And that's pretty much it to it. Um, I mean you can you can walk into the aliens with your flamethrower here or you can shoot it out at the distance. It's all about judging which ones are moving faster and which ones you're going to have to deal with first.
interesting sound effects. It's kind of a generic alien sound effect, not really xenomorph noises. But it will do. Quite a nice sprite on the xenomorph. And actually, that's a better sprite on the marine than we saw in the previous level. I mean, it's not the greatest sprite in the world. And I think we're using mode naught here. And that, it may have been mode naught on the previous level, but they only use about four colours, which is a bit odd. Maybe because they were like just quickly converting a lot of the graphics from the Commodore 64 version to the Specky and Amstrad and kept it simple. And there we go. Managed to get that one done without losing a single marina. I'm impressed with myself for that. And coming now we come on to the oh, okay. Ripley, Burke, open this door. Newt, Ripley, come this way. Will that air duct take us, take us out to the landing field? Sure, follow me, says Newt. Newt's the little girl in the movie. It's like the one surviving colonist. It's the little girl, a 10-year-old girl, I think it is, that survives. And basically, you're controlling Ripley there, who has Newt and the aliens, uh, sorry, the marines with her. And you've got to get through the air ducts and to the exit at the bottom there. And guys, doing this without losing a single marine is impossible. I have tried it over and over and over of snapshots because more aliens respawn right in the way of you. You're guaranteed to lo lose... Look, there you go. See, it's pretty much impossible. You're guaranteed to lose one or two. We lost two there. Probably going to lose a third here because this one's in the way. And then one spawns behind us. There we go. I hate this level, but as long as you've got at least three marines left, um, just blast through it pretty quickly. And there we go. And a frosty trick and crow are now missing. Oh dear. In fact, pretty much all the marines are dead apart from um, one of them anyway. Bishop, how much time do we have? 17 minutes. We're not leaving. We're not. She's alive. They brought her here and you know it. It's not too late. In the 17 minutes, this place will be, the cloud, uh, will be a cloud of vapour the size of Nebraska. Don't leave without me. So Bishop is the android. What The aliens have captured Newt. So we missed that scene here. And Ripley has to go and rescue Newt. Um, well, he's got to find her, the, the little girl. You can drop flares to uh, mark uh, your progress and where you've been. So what I'll do is I will drop a flare at every time I change direction. And you've got a range meter to the right there. It says Newt is 50 meters to the west. And now she's south of us. Uh oh, got an alien. Didn't need to drop a flare there because there's only one exit from there. And Newt is like basically not too far to find. She's sort of southwesty. And um, from your starting position. Um, so basically, this is Ripley here. And we've got an alien. There we go. It's been a little bit more exciting to watch than that second level. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the other versions of the game. Um, the Commodore 64, original, which is the original version. Um, there's nice eerie music in between levels, but none in-game. Um, looks and plays pretty much identically. Um, the alien attacks on the second level and this level are much smoother, faster, and just overall better, more exciting. Um, there's more of them up here as well to fight. It's also faster in the operations room level too. Uh, the air duct level, which we've just been on, uh, is much larger and it actually scrolls and it's more complex with duct, uh, air ducts overlapping each other. Oh, there's an alien in front of us. Um, and it's more of a maze. And the Alien Queen battle, which is the last level, which is the next level here from here, um, is much, much better. Oh, Alien Queen eggs. Oh, no, we're getting close now. Uh, so the Alien Queen battle is twice as fast, and the Alien Queen is properly animated too. And it's probably, the Commodore 64 version is probably the best version overall. Um, the Specky version, slowest, has the naffest graphics, has terrible sound effects, and is easily the worst version. Seriously, the APC rescue level and this level look absolutely pathetic. I mean, this looks pretty bad already, uh, but the specky graphics, oh my God. Um, and when we rescue Newt in the specky version, she doesn't even have any animation for her moving up and down. And looks bizarre, like floating alongside you like a ghost. You'll, you'll see shortly when, I mean, 
Newt doesn't look particularly good here either. Uh, the one thing I will give it above all of the versions is that the Alien Queen on the final level actually looks the best and most detailed. Wait and see what the Amstrad version looks like, guys. Um, this game also came out on the Apple II. Um, it plays a little bit slower. Uh, it has next to no sound effects. Otherwise, pretty much the same as the Commodore 64 and CPC. So the Commodore version is probably the best, followed by the Amstrad, then the Apple II, and then last place, the Spectrum. Oh, here's Newt. Should be on this room, next room. Oh, there's an alien in the way. You can hear the motion trucker going off. We've got time ticking away there, so we've got a time limit. Uh, limited amount of ammo. Ah! And we got Newt. There's Newt, the little girl. We've rescued her, and then she follows us. Really pathetic sprite work there. I will say the aliens actually look pretty good. Um, the same colour as the background. So they sometimes just like slowly creep out of the background and surprise you. That's actually quite a nice thing, I suppose. Um, but otherwise, yeah, pretty poop sprite work. And we can follow the flares back. Um, as for magazine reviews at the time, always look for the Amsterdam Action Review. Oh, we'll drop a flare here, right in the middle of the air. Alien Queen's eggs just to annoy the Alien Queen. <laughs> well, this is reviewed in Amstrad Action, issue 28, which is the Christmas 1987 issue or the January 1988 issue. Um, both reviewers could not get off level one. <laughs> they had to skip the levels and they got very frustrated by that. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't find that first level too hard, but some people do. Oh well. Uh, although, of course, as I said, you can cheat and see the rest of the levels by skipping them. Um, the main reviewer made special note of the appalling graphics from level two onwards, stating that it has some of the worst graphics since my eight-year-old cousin got into drawing characters. Ouch! But it's pretty. It's pretty true. They get the graphics: fifty-one percent, Sonic thirty-four percent, Grab Factor sixty percent, Stain Power fifty-two percent, and overall score of fifty-five percent. Bishop, sorry I had to give you a scare. I didn't have to circle things and then get too rough to take off. You did okay, Bishop. I did well, thanks. I, you noticed a tiny nutless drop of liquid splash onto the ramps. Acid, the queen's tail burst from his chest, rain ripply of milk like android blood. Seizing Bishop in two great hands, it rips him apart. The queen turns his attentions to Newt as the little girl crawls into a service channel under the deck. <sighs> Finally got that said. Actually, I had a little bit more time to say that. Oh well. Yes, we're now facing off against the alien queen. New, um, Bishop the android has been torn in two and Newt is hiding away. Oh, cutscene! <laughs> Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> that famous scene in the movie. And Ripley's in a power loader. And she's now fighting the alien queen, which is like the last bit of the movie. And basically just keep smacking the alien queen with the power loader arms there. And once you have hit her enough times, you can press the fire button to close the jaws on the arms. And hopefully grab the alien queen and then drop it through the air duct, which will open automatically for you. And it's, it's not too hard, to be honest. You don't have to get her energy right down. That's her energy bar at the bottom. Uh, but it will help. The Alien Queen is literally one sprite with no frames of animation. That is terrible. At least the Specky version has animation on the Alien Queen. And um, that's pretty terrible. Oh, we got her. And she's not exactly quite in the jaws there. <laughs> actually, the jaws have missed, but we still managed to grab her. The airlock opens for her and we can drop her through. There we go. As Newt has been tucked into the hypersleep capsule for the journey home, she grasps Ripley hand. Are we going to sleep now? That's right, Newt. Can we dream? Yes, honey. I think we both can. <laughs> Why is this after that scene? This is before it. Not bad for a human. That's just after the alien queen has died. And that text screen is should be after it. Oh, oh well, doesn't matter. And then we get the end screen there. There we go. So... Review score time. Amstrad Action gave this 55%. Um, I find this hard to score because there's a lot gone into the presentation, yet a lot of it's very basic and simple of text screens and stuff. But we do have some cutscenes and 
and nice little touches here and there. They follow the plot of the movie very closely. It does feel like the actual movie. It feels like a game of the movie, and that's good. Um, the other Aliens game is much better, uh, but a lot of this is really crudely done. Um, but however, I have to be honest, and so I did play this a lot as a kid. I did. So Amsterdam actually gave this 55%. I think I'll give this like a 69%. Um, but so I think overall if I round it up I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 there we go thank you for watching guys I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I hope to see you all again very soon goodbye so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed that if you did please click a like below leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already and over that way there's another video for you to check out Zypho out